What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Thanks to the team over at Heat Toys, we're going to be taking a look at the Magic Square MSB30 Jet Fighter Team aka the Coneheads. Now if you are in the market for picking this set up, it is available and in stock right now over at Heat Toys. So for that, there will be links down in the description box below. I was ecstatic to receive this set as the Coneheads are actually one of my favorite set of jets from the G1 series as I just think that their designs are so unique and they look vastly different from some of your more standard seekers such as Starscream, Thundercracker and Skywarp. You can see here that in these renditions, they are incredibly faithful to their G1 counterparts. We've got here Thrust, we've got here Ramjet and then of course Dirge and they all have got their own collector cards. Now of course these are called slightly different names due to this being a third party product. So here we've got Thrust and his name is Assault, Ramjet is Engine and then of course Dirge is Perish. Just giving you a quick look at the front cards you can see really nice pictures of the actual figures themselves displayed on the cards and then if you flip around to the back we've got the figures in their all forms with some of their statistics which is really really cool. I'm always a massive fan of when companies include collector cards like this. It's very similar to the masterpiece tradition that we get with the Hasbro and Takara products. But here we have the main figures themselves and I've got to say that they are a great set to add to the collection. For someone who's never picked up any renditions of the Coneheads before, I've got to say that I'm very impressed with how Magic Square have in fact approached these. Now we'll start off here with my favourite, that being Thrust. You can see here that the detailing I think is just absolutely fantastic on these figures. Now they are rather small, I will bring out a comparison very shortly in this video, but they are actually considerably smaller than I thought they were and considering how much detail and the level of engineering that they've actually managed to pack into these and they all actually look rather different in their robot modes as well as in their vehicle modes, but they share almost identical transformations which I just thought was absolutely genius. If you flip under to the underside, we don't really have too much in terms of robot mode kibble. When I get figures that are slightly smaller than some of your standard Hasbro figures, which have actually been able to accomplish more than larger Hasbro figures, it really does make me question as to what Hasbro and the design team over there are actually doing, as I think that considering the scale of these, these look absolutely tremendous. You can see the red paint apps there for the cockpit, and the really nice silver highlights going over the cockpit as well. I'm a massive fan of these turbines. They do in fact rotate, which is a super nice attention to detail. And here we've also got some nice red paint apps, which actually does clip onto these pieces, which are supposed to simulate where the engine sections of this would be, which I think looks super cool. Just a really nice looking jet. And we do in fact have some null rays under there. They do actually come with a few different null rays, which I'll showcase later on. But that is definitely a super, super cool looking figure. So just setting him off to the side for now and then bringing out Ramjet. You can see here that once again, I think they've done an amazing job. As stated, they do share very similar designs. However, it's mainly the wings and the fin pieces which are different. And I just think that it really does help to set them apart from one another. You can see all of the panel lining detailing. And he once again does have different null rays here. These ones being ever so slightly bigger. They almost look as if though they are fuel intakes or perhaps huge missiles, which is really nice. And you can in fact deploy these sections here as landing gear, which I think was a super nice attention to detail. However, considering their size and that they are prone to falling off, I definitely won't be deploying them too often, but definitely a super, super cool looking figure. And then finally bringing out Dirge. You can see here, but I just think his design is super cool. I love how the wings and then the fins poke up from the sides. Definitely very interesting of a design. And I love the way that the blue and the orange contrast with one another. It looks super cool. And then just once again, turning around to the underside. As stated, they are more or less identical in terms of their overall engineering. So all of the pieces on the undersides are identical to one another. Although, believe it or not, they do actually look vastly different within their robot modes. Now, talking about some of the additional accessories that these figures come with, you can see here that we do get quite a variation of different designs for null rays, which I think is super cool. It just allows for some different diversity. So here we've got a more missile looking null ray. And here we've got a more traditional G1 Seeker Null Ray, which I think looks quite cool. And all of these are hinged, but this is to accommodate the articulation for robot mode. So definitely a really awesome set of figures. In this review, I will only be showcasing the transformation on one of these as it is more or less identical for the three of them. It's just a different positioning for how the back of the wings go, which really is the major standout in terms of differences in transformation, but the main core of it is identical. So we'll start off here with Thrust and we'll get him fully transformed. What I like to do here is just loosen up all of this. So you just simply want to pull this out and then separate these null rays. They are just held in via some pegs and ports. So just remove those on both sides. We can then take these sections here and clip those in. 
and then proceed to clip these sections in also with that now done we can flip to this side and just detach this and then this whole piece here should just fold over the top and then we can begin to worry about this section later on we can then take these pieces and just attach those and then with this you're going to want to lift this section up and rotate this all the way around so repeat the same process here for this side lift this section up and rotate it around and then with the leg you're going to want to take it and slide it up and then that will then allow you to get your finger in there and pull out the toe which I've got to say considering these figures are quite small it can be quite fiddly but I honestly think the transformation for their size is genius and then just snap that into place and then repeat the same process here for this side so slide this section out and then fold this section in. Something which I failed to mention is that he does in fact have some landing gear actually underneath the toes. However, it's really and truly unaccessible. We can just peg this section into place. And now beginning to work on the upper torso section, you're going to want to fold these pieces back and then angle these sections out. Take these and angle those out and then angle this piece backwards to fill out the back of the arm. So just snap that into place and then repeat the same process here for this side. I wouldn't apply too much force to these as I don't believe anything will necessarily break but you don't want small pieces flying off as I do believe it will probably be incredibly difficult for you to track those down later on. Take this nose cone section now and then just come to this head section, fold this down and then fold this down and then rotate the head around and it will just clip into place and you can already see the amazing detail that this is going to have in robot mode fold out this piece and then just bring that down sit that flush and repeat the same process here for this side so just pull this section out and sit that flush now this is where you're going to want to be wary of where different pieces are supposed to swivel so these sections here you're going to want to keep flat but these pieces you're going to want to hinge downwards over the chest so that you have a design which looks like this. Nothing unfortunately really tabs into place which is one of my flaws with these figures within their robot modes but if you do angle it all correctly it should look rather cohesive and definitely a lot more solid. You can then rotate these sections around and then we can take this and you're going to want to shift this pin joint down and then just compress the waist joint. We can then rotate to this section and you can see here a small tab that this slot will go in so you're going to want to lift this up swivel it down and then just snap it into place and then repeat the exact same process here swivel it down snap that into place nice and securely and then just angle these sections up lift that section up and here we have thrust fully transformed up into his robot mode and i've got to say for the scale of these figures I think he looks absolutely incredible. Just showing you some of the differences for Dirge's transformation. You just want to hinge these sections down, pull these sections out, and then just flip this section up. And then the rest of the transformation is exactly the same as what I just demonstrated here with Frost. Once again, it's very minimal differences here with Ramjet compared to the transformation of both Frost and Dirge. So for this, you simply just want to pull this section down and hinge this outwards. So pull this down, hinge this outwards. And then these sections here will angle downwards, which will then allow you to flip all of this up. And then you'll just collapse these down for robot mode. And the rest of the transformation is once again identical to that of Frost's. With each of the cone heads now fully transformed, it's just a matter of choosing which missile or null ray you wish to actually install on the arms. I'm personally, I'm going to go with the more traditional Seeker Null Rays, just as I like unity amongst my Seekers and cone heads. So you can see here that we do have a port there where the elbow section would be. And you just want to put this peg into place just aligning it can be rather fiddly as, as I stated these are quite small figures but I think for their size the detail and the amount of engineering that have gone into them is really nicely done and that is the installation for one of the null rays and for those of you worried about whether or not it compromises articulation it doesn't at all they actually do have hinge joints on them which allows you to fully accommodate the entire range of motion out of the arm which I think is fantastic so if you want to bend it you can then just collapse that down and you can literally pose this in whatever way you so choose. So a really nice design touch there by Magic Square. And so here we have the cone heads by Magic Square fully transformed up into their robot modes. And I hope that you'll all agree with me in saying that these look absolutely fantastic. 
so faithful to their original G1 cartoon appearance and I think that Magic Square have done a tremendous job in giving us a really awesome looking vehicle mode, quite a fun and enjoyable transformation considering their size and super accurate looking robot modes. So we'll start off with my personal favourite, that being Thrust, so just bringing him in for a closer look. You can see here that I think that the level of detail to the head looks amazing. All of these do in fact have different head sculpts and you can see the gold and red paint apps there for these fin pieces. And the nose cone is of course black with the red plastic bleeding through. I really do like the silver paint apps here on these turbines and I love how the cockpit sits in the actual center of the chest. You can see here that all of those panels really do compress and become one coherent looking sculpt which is fantastic. Now a slight problem I have which I do believe is probably down to the scale of these is that as you begin to move these around you can unfortunately begin to unlock this and the illusion of it being a solid piece can easily be lost but personally that's completely forgivable for me considering how small these figures actually are you can see that I think that they've done a great job in capturing where these sections do hang off of thrusts back just giving you a back perspective for that you can in fact hinge these forwards and backwards so if you wish to get them out of the way you can hinge them outwards or if you wish to have them in a more g1 traditional look you can in fact hinge them inwards which I think is fantastic we also do have some nice detailing here for the crutch plate and I think the hands and the fingers have also been detailed quite nicely and then you can see some really clean paint apps there for the knee pads and then the feet look super cool as well. The second universal issue that I do have with all three of these is that they do in fact unfortunately suffer from loose joints. Now these figures are incredibly articulated which is a huge bonus in my opinion but considering that some of the joints are fairly loose, specifically the actual feet joints, it can make standing these figures up rather a chore after a while. Now these are review samples, so it could just be the fact that these are test copies and that the final figure will be in fact a lot more tighter in terms of the tolerances. But for me, I have found it sometimes to be quite an annoyance, but it's nothing that your traditional floor polish or super glue couldn't fix. In terms of articulation, we do have a ball joint at the head, moving side to side as well as up and down. We also have ball joints here at the shoulders, allowing for the arms to move outwards as well as allowing them to rotate forwards and backwards the full 360. We also do get a swivel joint here at the bicep and I demonstrated the articulation and the way that the actual null rays can move out of the way depending on how you wish to pose this figure. We do get a 90 degree bend of motion there for the elbow and then the wrists can also rotate the full 360. I'm in love with the articulation that we get here for the waist so we do of course get the full 360 degree waist rotation joint but due to transformation you can in fact actually get an ab crunch out of this which is fantastic specifically for posing these figures on flight stands i think that that is a really nice attention to detail and addition by magic square we also do get ball joints here for the legs so they can kick forwards that far back that far as well as out to the sides rotation here where the upper hip section would be and then a 90 degree bend at the knee and then finally for the feet these are actually really well articulated they can pivot side to side as well as hinge forwards and backwards and due to transformation the toe can also hinge forwards and backwards as well. So considering their scale I think that the articulation on these figures is just absolutely superb. And then taking a look at the details here on Ramjet, you can see that he once again has a really awesome looking head sculpt, very gnarly and menacing in my opinion, and all the paint apps here are once again correct and present. As stated, they are very similar to one another, so I won't delve into the details too much, I'll just show you the differences in terms of their paint apps, but all incredibly clean, I can't notice any paint bleeds whatsoever. And these sections here are on hinge joints, so if you wish to have the more G1 traditional look, you can definitely have these out to the sides, or you can fold those backwards or forwards depending on your own personal preference. We can also hinge these back fin pieces up and down if you so choose, which I think is a super, super cool attention to detail. And then just bringing in Dirge for his comparison and showcase, you can see that he once again has a super nice looking head sculpt, very G1, which I just think is so, so cool. And I love the blue plastic used on this as well. It's very reflective and all the paint apps are really, really crisp. And it's a very similar method to what we saw there with Ramjet in the sense that you can hinge these pieces back, have them out to the sides or have them forwards. And these pieces here can also hinge forward and backwards as well. And just getting a comparison of all three of their head sculpts, if I can get them all in the frame, you can see here that they're all very, very different, which is so, so cool. Really lovely head sculpts on all of these figures. For a quick size comparison, here we have Thrust compared to that of the Masterpiece Bumblebee 2.0 version. And you can see here that he is even smaller than the MP Bumblebee that was recently released last year. You can see that he definitely 
doesn't stand eye to eye with this Bumblebee. But honestly, the level of detail, the articulation, the range of motion, just everything, the engineering, I just think is so, so well done on these figures. And I don't have any QC issues with these figures other than some of the tolerances on the joints not being as tight as I perhaps would have liked them to have been. But you can see here that they have done a commendable job in engineering these figures, considering how small they are compared to one of the smallest masterpiece figures. So that was my review on the Magic Square MSB30 Jet Fighter Team set, aka the Coneheads from the Transformers G1 cartoon series. If you haven't guessed already from this review, I am over the moon with this latest release by Magic Square. I think that the level of detail, the amount of articulation that these figures have, as well as the really well engineered transformation, makes these figures stand out to me. Their scale is something that I just cannot get over, considering how small they are. The amount of engineering that Magic Square have in fact packed into these, I just think is incredible especially compared to some of the larger Hasbro figures. These are really, really well done. Yes, they have their problems, such as the tolerances in terms of the joints, but those can easily be rectified with some home remedies. And as stated, these are early review samples, so the tolerances on the final product may actually vary to these ones. I also want to say once again, a massive thank you to Heat Toy for sending me over this set to review. And if you are in the market for picking up this set, I will include links to their website and to this listing down in my description box below. I really hope that you enjoyed this review, and if you did, please let me know down in the comment section below and be sure to let me know whether or not you're going to be adding these to your collection. Personally for me these are the best representations I've seen of the Coneheads in a very long time and I think that it's going to take a lot for anything in the future to surpass those. I really hope you enjoyed this video and until my next video I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.